hopefully feel empowered. You have a lot to share as well, and we would like you to um, be working towards that goal. Of course, we want to still come back. I love coming to Ukraine, so I hope that you'll still invite me back as well. <laughs> but um, I would love to have more Ukrainian teachers giving presentations, workshops, because there's just so many great ideas floating around this country, and I just love it's a good energy. I think we can share and learn from it. So, all right. So, last one today. I know there's a lot of some technology. Um, presentations, Web 2.0, I saw on here, so hopefully this will kind of tie in and there's not too much repetition. But language learning with video and photography. So first of all, how many of you right now have a camera or a phone with a camera? Everyone? Who does not? Okay, that's okay. If you do not, for this exercise I'd like you to share with your partner. Okay? It's okay. So everyone get out your phone or your camera. Your camera phone or your camera camera. Or your iPad. Whatever. Okay? Alright. So I'd like you to look in this whole classroom. Look all around. You can go anywhere you want. I want you to take a photo of three things that you find interesting. It can be people or things, anything, okay? Three, but you only have exactly one minute to do this. Okay, are you ready? Go. I'll time you. Go. One minute to take three photos. Three technologies that the students already love. They already love to use these. They already know how to use this. You don't have to teach them. You don't have to pre-teach how to use it. You can just start right in with our students. Also, it's visual and interactive. So time and time again, we see research that says if an activity or if language learning is both visual and interactive, the information will be retained longer and more efficiently. And just countless research that shows us this. And when we're taking photos and taking our own photos, we are interacting with not only the subject, but with how we relate to the subject or language. Um, even our quiet students can participate. So it kind of stimulates them, it helps get them out because they can do the activity. Even if they don't fully understand your instructions in English, they see what the other students are doing and they can partake. And they can get a little bit of confidence through sharing. And perfect nowadays, it's widely available. And we don't have to have expensive equipment in our classrooms, which is super great. Okay? All right, so this is me in Shastia. Really? Does anyone know where Shastia is? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Happier times. Happier times in Shastia. And this is with a group of high school students. And I did a scavenger hunt with them on photography. So what we did, first of all, is I gave them a short presentation on how to take better photos with their little cameras, how to make their photos better. Okay? So I had a whole presentation. I taught them things like the rule of thirds. Does anyone know what the rule of thirds is? Has anyone heard of this? Yeah. For the photo. For the photo. Huh? The should be Well, close. Good guess. The rule of thirds means that when you look through your camera, or like this, and you picture your photo, you should imagine that it is in three parts here and three parts here. Okay. Now, the rule of thirds in photography says when you take a photo, your photo is more interesting if your subject is here or here or here or here. Not to the, the center, right? Yeah. However, there are some beautiful photographs where the subject's right in the center, right? But the photographer knows this rule. When you know this rule, then you can break it, okay? If you don't know the rule and all your pictures are in the center, of course it's not as good. So this was a rule at thirds. I taught them how they can get close mm -hmm. and fill the frame, mm -hmm. fill the whole frame with their subject. Okay, we talked about mergers. Does anyone know what a merger is? Oh, it's, it's like, like connecting something. Kind of. It's like if I take a picture of her in the park, but I didn't see that she has a tree growing out of her head, right? 
or something like this, or a fence post going into the head, right? We, we see these pictures all the time. So we talked about, I would tell them the concept, and then in the classroom they would practice. There's me with my big camera, and they're, they're trying it out. So I would tell them a concept, and then they would practice. And then when I would tell them again, and then they would practice. Mm -hmm. and this is all levels within this group, very low and fairly uh, competent with English. So we went over this, we had the whole session, and then I gave them a scavenger hunt like this. Okay, so number one, take a picture of something blue using the rule of thirds. Okay, take a picture of something yellow. Take a picture of something using fill the frame. Okay. Take an interesting photo of a building from up high or down low, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, use leading lines. These are leading lines. See how the line leads to the subject? Mm -hmm. Leads the eyes there, okay? So they learned all this first, and then I gave them, and then they went off into their neighborhood and had a lot of fun. So they're using English to follow directions, even though it's you would think, oh, it's kind of complicated, it's photography rules, but these students could all do it. They worked together in pairs, and then they uploaded their photos to our Facebook group. We had a Facebook group, and it was just kind of fun, interesting activity. The point of this activity is not that they become beautiful, wonderful photographers, but that they learn to use the language to follow directions and to communicate, and it was a really good activity. Now. If you don't know a lot of rules about photography, it's okay. You can still do a scavenger hunt. Oh, oops. I did it in Japan, too. I'll show you my Japanese students. High school students, same thing. <laughs> there they are doing all kinds of things, because they all have cameras. Yeah, so she's, you know, they're doing all kinds of angles, and they also had it. So they're English language learners as well, and they loved it. Okay. So here's some ideas for your scavenger hunt. I did this one, but you could do vocabulary. Take a picture of, at lower level, a house, a car, a bus. Um, for higher levels, you can do a different activity, which I'm going to talk about later. Adjectives and descriptions. Take a picture of something big, small, short, fat, thin, sweet, salty. Sites around the school or the neighborhood. You know, find the post office. Take a picture. Find a babushka sweeping. Take a picture if you ask her, right? Okay. Home and family, a week in the life of. So there's lots of ideas you can make your own scavenger hunt. Has anyone done a photo scavenger hunt before? Mm -hmm. The students just love it. Huh? Summer camp. Summer camp. It's like a summer camp activity, but you can still you can do it for a homework assignment. And they have fun. They can go off in their groups. You don't need to use any class time really to do it. Something that they can do. Okay. Another activity I like to do with photography is storytelling. Tell a story. So these students um, from Luhansk and Shastia, they came together and their assignment was to tell a story about life as an EFL learner in Ukraine. Okay, so some of them took pictures on the train to summer camp. Some of them took pictures at the school cafeteria because they have English classes right before lunch. Um, took pictures of the friends that they met through English, through access programs. They, some of them took pictures of their English textbook. Some of them took pictures of um, their English teachers. Right, so just how, what does an English language learner's life look like in Ukraine? And I wanted him to think, if you were telling a story in a storybook and there's no words, how would it look in your pictures? Okay? And then, of course, what we did is in the class we would share our stories. You don't even need a computer, they can share it on their phones mm -hmm. or on their little cameras. Okay? So you don't need technology for this, but then they have to talk about the story. You can work on storytelling first. After that, transitions, and then I do this, and every day I do this, and it works on different storytelling techniques. Tell me about your daily routine. What do you do from when you wake up in the morning? So you had to take a picture of yourself, Ooh. selfie in the morning, brushing your teeth, right? Some of them hate this, but some of them think it's pretty funny. Uh, your school life. Tell me a story about what you do with your friends on a Saturday. Tell me a story about uh, your family, or tell me a story about something in your home. Okay. 
And then they can, they can share these many ways. They can make a photo essay. If you have more access to printing, they could do a photo essay. They could do a PowerPoint if you want to teach PowerPoint presentation skills and if you have that technology. Um, these Microsoft Photo Story iMovie are free. Usually you can download off the internet, free programs. And then, of course, Facebook or the Contactia albums are really good for sharing. But there's so many ideas, and you can take from the textbook, you can take from the curriculum you're teaching, kind of go along with that idea of what you're trying to teach them. Think grammar that they're learning. Um, you could say, if you were teaching the conditional, if I had a million dollars, I would, and they could illustrate that through pictures, they could get really creative and, and learn the grammar that they're, they're working with currently. So it's a good way to kind of just give something fun alongside the curriculum you're teaching so that we can kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Okay? All right. So something I love, which has really worked great for me in all levels, is it having the students create their own picture dictionaries on their phones. So, I'll give you an example. This was from Luhansk when I was teaching university students, but you can adapt it to any level. And I told you they were studying about American government. This was their, I'll come over here, these were their uh, vocabulary words for that chapter. Patriotism, democracy, corruption, negotiation, conflict, power struggle, protest. So, we learn the definitions of the words through the textbook, okay? But then the assignment was, now, make a photograph which represents each word for you so that you can remember it. So I made my example. <laughs> I'll show you. Here's <laughs> democracy, or no, here's patriotism. <laughs> this guy's from South Africa, actually. <laughs> <laughs> my from South Africa, I dress him up. Okay, patriotism, you know, a pride for my country. Democracy, that's my husband. My husband likes beer. That's his favorite beer shop in the United States. Democracy for me means having free choice. And so my husband's having free choice of the beers, and he's allowed to make them and choose and decide. So you kind is more democratic than the U.S. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Actually, that's in the U.S. Yeah, so. Corruption, okay? Taking something that should be for the benefit of the people and using it for money and profit, which ultimately makes it bad. So here we have food. Right? It's supposed to be food. People eat this, but what is it? It's chemicals, it's coloring, it's just for money and profit. Junk. So this is my interpretation of corruption. Negotiation. Anybody know that guy? Jerry? Yeah. Negotiation means two or more sides coming together for agreements and to work together. So this is my idea of, oh, I was so much skinnier then. Oh, come on. I hate looking at that picture. Friendly. Memories. Friendly. Okay. Conflict. Do I want the crab lays or the bacon lays? I can't decide. Power struggle. When I moved to Luhansk and I lived alone and I tried to do laundry, I spoke no Russian and I saw that. <laughs> so I was just like, D -d 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 and I could never get my washer to work. It just wouldn't work because I couldn't figure it out. So it's like, I'm human. I should have power. But this machine has the power. So it's like a power struggle for me. Like, you know, two things that want or need power and they, they clash, they collide. And then an easy one, protest. This was a protest of immigrant teachers in the United States in Washington, D.C. Okay, so what I would do, this was my example for the students, so I would take these pictures and they'd be on my phone. I guarantee you I will never forget these words because I have my own association with it. I learned what the definition is and then I made a photograph with my own association. I can always remember it. And the students did the same thing. They did the same thing. So after a while, they start having these different folders on their phone or in Vukontakcha, 
or in Facebook. So, for example, they could have chapter one vocabulary on Facebook or Vacantactia. And, and when they're studying for tests, they can just look through the pictures they made. It's so easy. And they can remember these associations. It's really great for visual learners. And it's a good opportunity to be a little bit more creative. They can also keep it on their phone and look through. Oh, I forgot what that word was. Looking through their own photos will spark something within them. Has anyone done anything like this before? No. no. Picture dictionaries. They're I was awesome. doing the rule of maps. I discovered about the method of location, and we were doing the maps, uh, like locating words to particular places, and they were <coughs> taking photos of places. <coughs> okay, places. Yeah, because we were studying a lot of terminology, and we, they needed to connect something. So they, are, they were connecting particular points okay. are in the city with a particular word, like manager, acquisition, defamation. Okay, so it's a similar kind of yeah. word association with yeah. their own idea. Same thing. Same thing. Make it more visual. So why not make the students make their own? And they just really love it. It really works well. And I saw my students' vocabulary use go up because they had a personal connection with the word because of their photo. And I saw them actually use the words more, even my high school students. So I encourage you to try this. It's, it's a good one. Yeah. And one day on Earth. I think there's a few of these. There's different ones. And they actually, they sometimes take these pictures and make hard books of them. And they make Yeah, yeah. So, films. Yeah, films, all kinds of things. So you can have your students upload things to that. Yeah, that's another good project. Another they photo. I'm very excited. Sure, it's a photo related, and they can see what everyone else around the world has uploaded. Definitely. All right. Okay, so hear about these photo vocabulary albums. Places they can share it or store it if they don't have a phone. Most of our students have phones. I think. Can I say that accurately? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Most of them do. But these are also other ways, so they can look at other students' vocabulary books if they want. But I don't really make it as a class activity. I really want this to be a personal thing because learning vocabulary is very personal, mm -hmm. I think. And not everyone learns the same way with that. So I try to encourage them to keep their chapter, their chapter vocab in different folders, which is easy with these programs. Okay, I hope I have, did somebody play a video today? Do we have volume? Does it work? Yes, it is. Helpful, okay. But I feel like if I play it, it won't work, but we'll see. Um, another project I like to do, it's so easy nowadays, is to have kind of virtual pen pals. So contacting other countries' schools and using English as the main communicative language. But instead of the old days, you would write letters and send them, and maybe they would get there. We do this virtually. So um, I would have, well, let's go. In Japan, we had pen pals in California. So I contacted them because I had a friend who was teaching at high school in California. I'm like, let's do an exchange. We did everything by video. We had video greetings, video messages. And then one of our assignments, the students had to create a video introducing their school to the students in California and vice versa. We also did introduce Japanese food. So all the students had their different food. We had introduced um, a day in the life of a Japanese student or a Japanese home. And then the California students did the same thing and we just went back and forth. It's easy to share. So unfortunately, I don't have my Japanese students work, but I have the video from California. You can still get an idea. It's a really badly made video. The sound's not that good. The camera's shaky, but it's the students work and my students still really enjoyed it. So I'm going to um, play it for you, but here are the rules that we had. Okay? First, you have to introduce an aspect of your school or culture to the foreigners. You have to be clear, well rehearsed, and easy to understand. So for my class, in J Japanese high schools, every class is 40 students. They're quite large. Wow. Um, in American high schools, they're usually 30 
25, 30. So I had them in groups of four, and each group had to, had to contribute to a part of the video. So each group had their own assignment. Every person in the group had to have a speaking part, so they did have to write it and practice it. Um, like we said, speaking part for each group member, be within the time frame, and then for these we uploaded them actually to YouTube. We had a class YouTube. So let's watch the high school one from come to school. We drive to school and they filmed it. They filmed their lockers. They filmed their classrooms. They did most of the work outside of class. And your students could do this outside of class too. Maybe if you want to give a little bit of time for a few class hours. I know you're limited on your classroom times and I know you have other things to get through so this you can't always spend a lot of time but the students usually can do this on their own. Um, during the break I can get this video I have it stored elsewhere and I can show it to you so I'll show it to you. Um, but has anyone done anything kind of like this? A video exchange? Can you tell us more about what you did? There is such a organization people to people international and uh -huh. they find classrooms for it or like fan file exchanges or something like that and I had such an exchange every year. Okay. Every year we had a class from Texas if I'm not mistaken and we were exchanging videos. Actually greeting videos and then something about they sent us questions, mm -hmm. video questions and we recorded the answers and sent them back and twice about it. That was really interesting for children. Excellent. And what age was that? Hmm? It was not real time. It was just no, we were Oh yeah, no, fun. not real time not because real of the time, time differences. Oh, no. Yeah. No. So how can you find an exchange if you don't already know someone? People to people? Peace Corps? Because, well, when the Peace Corps comes back, <laughs> once we get them back, Peace Corps volunteers, they always have connections to their hometown high school where they're from. And then of course the U.S. Embassy, Aliona, if you say we want to get some correspondence with someone, mm -hmm. they can do that easily, easily. There's so many high schools in the United States that are do wanting to do the same thing. So it's very, very easy if you don't have a direct connection that you can use any of these. And I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more. Has anyone else done any kind of pen pals abroad yet? Can you tell us a little bit? This year my students work in circle. In mm -hmm. circle, it's a combination of some schools from different countries of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and say, think about everything. Everything's different. Everything's different. How we sit in the classrooms, how the teacher comes in, lunch time's different. Different school sports and clubs. Some high schools here don't even really have sports, and some of the smaller ones, right? So that would be something your students would want to talk about. And it's just so awesome. Because these Japanese students are just like, <laughs> you know, they can wear earrings and makeup, it's crazy, or spray paint their benches. I mean, that's just for that high school, so I think every high school has their own little thing. But um, it's just so good. They have to use English to communicate. And what's even better is they're sharing their culture. Not, I'm not really just talking about Ukrainian culture, I'm talking about their personal school culture. That's a different culture. And to be able to um, learn English is what we want to do to be able to share these cultures. So it's a great thing. And the project idea, also fantastic. And I hope I encourage you if you can do this. You don't have to spend a lot of class time on these. You don't have to give the students class time to film. They can have assignments outside of class. So you can still get your work done and get the things you need to do. You can still tie in curriculum. You can have certain language requirements. Like, you must use the present progressive at least so many times, if you want to do that. So you can still get those things in the videos. You can make your own rec requirements for that. It's just a good way. The students love it. They get a kick out of it, too. All right. Look at this picture. I'm going to give you one minute. In your partners, I want you to write as many adjectives as you can about this picture. You have one minute. It's a competition. Go. And we'll make a little calendar. And each week, one student will bring in their own photo. They can bring it as a print, or maybe they can email it to you and you can project it, however you can do it. And what the student will do, the student will come up and the, he'll, he or she will say, okay class, here's my photo. You have one minute. Write as many adjectives as you can. Go. 
So the student is now the teacher, because you, the teacher, are a student. You're sitting there. They're working together one minute for adjectives. Then the student says, all right, what adjectives do we have? Okay, and so the students will give out their adjectives, we'll listen to them, we'll see who had the most adjectives, okay? And then that's just a warm up. It gets students thinking about adjectives, it encourages them to learn some more adjectives. Every week if a student can only think of interesting, lovely, then they know they need to increase their, their adjective vocabulary. It gives, um, it gives each student the chance to be a teacher and to show a photo of their own. It can be any photo they want. So it gives them a chance to have a little bit of power within the classroom and to be in a different position, which is always encouraging, usually encouraging. Um, you, can have, you can have the students, if this is a writing class, you can have them incorporate the adjectives into a paragraph. Okay, so the Vietnam picture, I'd be like, now use some of these adjectives, write a descriptive paragraph about this photo. Um, you can have the, the photographer give you more information like I did. Oh, this was taken here. I took it because of this. Give them a little bit more chance to speak English. So it's a good idea, another way to connect with vocabulary in this instance with adjectives. Does anyone do anything else kind of similar with adjective work and photography? No, photography is such a, so visual, and adjectives are visual. Adjectives are words that help us to visualize, so they just really go together naturally. I love to use photographs with adjectives as much as possible. As much as possible. Um, I, I like one activity, and you can find uh, these pictures in the net. Uh -huh. Faces, different faces, and I start uh, the lesson with uh, how do you feel? And there are faces, one is smiling, the other is expressing the boring uh -huh. expression of the face. And what are you now? What kind of feeling have you now? Are you bored? bored? Are you um, happy? Are you whatever? Uh -huh. And that is very good because. Get I, introduce, them. Mm -hmm. I introduce what kinds of faces maybe, and they find themselves where they are. Sure. And how to start the lesson. It's now. also a good warm up, a good idea to get them in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, have a variety of pictures from the internet and pictures that they have produced themselves. Um, I had a thought I was going to say about that, and it, it flew away. It must be Saturday. <laughs> I can't keep thoughts in my head. Um, yeah. Uh, I once observed um, an activity not connected with the pictures, but actually it was our, uh, a tr translation of art into word conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, project that they held had held before the conference was that they asked all the participants via uh, an email mm -hmm. to send them uh, the recording of some adjectives, there were about 10 adjectives pronounced in their own language. Mm -hmm. And then they incorporated that all together and did some art research. Some art projects. Mm -hmm. Art and adjectives go happening simultaneously. Maybe you can uh, work together with another teacher to have them do interviews. They can do them outside of class. Um, and then like take a picture and then talk about this person in their class. Of course, they can do the same thing with the other English teachers in the community or in the school. Okay. They can do a photo documentary. This goes along with the storytelling of an event or a holiday. Um, they can use written explanations or verbal. They can, it, this can be used in, the, in part with the international exchange. You can pair them up one-on-one -on -one to exchange or as a class. Um, self-portraits, selfies, okay? Students take selfies all the time, but for the self-portrait, I would encourage them to be more creative, maybe use a timer, or have a different way of taking a portrait, and then talking about it. So you can have about me paragraphs for beginning level students, or you could write autobiographies for your more advanced and have a, a beautiful, self-portrait and you could go online and show students examples of different creative self-portraits not just this right there's all kinds of ways we can take self-portraits so it's another way for them to not only express themselves visually but then to connect it to their written expression which makes it more personal which makes it more interesting so that's a way to get them involved with that 
Oh, this is this is one of my favorite, and I need to get the video from this. I did this in Japan. I went around the school and I found oh, many pieces of broken things. So like like a part of a part of a chair. I found a stick. I found a tube for something. I'm sure in your schools you have no junk, right? <laughs> yeah, all schools have junk hidden somewhere. So I brought into the class this big table of junk, all kinds of junk. I put them into different groups and they drew a number. So if, they, if you have number one, you can come and choose your piece of junk first. And then each group had a piece of junk that they had to sell. Mm -hmm. So they had to come up with an infomercial selling their junk. What is it? Is it the Brainomaniac 2000? Right? They had to first brainstorm as a group. What is our junk? How are we going to sell it? And they are so hilarious and so creative. They're so creative. Then they have to make an infomercial. What's an infomercial? Every country has it. It's a commercial but longer, right? Introducing our new product, da 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 da. Okay, only 290 grivna. But if you call now, we'll give you a second one for free, right? These are infomercials, and the students know them because they're in every country, and they know the format. You introduce the product, then you have testimonials. So some of the other students will be like, I tried this product and look what it did for me, right? And so they know the format of it. You could film these and watch them as a class, or you could just demonstrate in the class, but they're really, really funny. And I hope the next time I do this presentation, I'll have a, a video of it because my videos are actually in Japan. I, sh I need to get those from them. So really funny, really creative. The students love it. At first, they're just like, what? You know how they shut off their creativity brains. But once they start brainstorming with their group, you hear laughter and they start getting into it. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how-to videos are always really good. So explain to someone in the United States how to make Vereniki. Or explain to someone in the United States how to um, what? how to do a traditional dance, or explain to your friends how to ride a skateboard, okay? Yeah, how to make your braid, okay? But they have to be very detailed, is they have to think the person they're talking to has no idea, no idea. So they have to practice this. They have to write a script, and then they have to film it and put them together. And these can be put onto YouTube, they can be shared with the class, and or they can be shared with your international exchange if you have partnered up with someone. They're really awesome and you can learn a lot from them too. I've learned a lot from these. Okay. And once again, these are just a few places we can share our projects, our albums, but nowadays it's unlimited. So this is already out of date because there's about 50 more and the students know them, they're the first to know them. So there's all kinds of free ways of sharing, of exchanging, and that's really a benefit for us as teachers, for sure. Okay. All right, so I always like to finish with the sharing time. So in your groups, maybe four or five, I'd like you to share how do you use photo or video in your classrooms now? What are some projects, some different things you do? If you don't currently use it, what are some things that you think you might be able to use it for, just like yesterday's sharing? So I'll give you some time to share and go ahead. Speak with your colleagues, which is great for us. Um, so we can always go back, no, you didn't do it. Recorded, okay. Who else has something to share with us? We've had two. You're going to be parting ways soon. Now's the time to leave us with your ideas. Well, we were talking for 15 minutes and no one has an idea of something they do. We, what were you talking about? Lunch? Dinner? Yeah. Okay, there is such a own ideas. I hope that maybe I gave you at least one thing you can learn today. Maybe two? Hopefully three? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, so I hope that you can use some of these things. Um, best of luck to you in your teaching endeavors. I can't wait to come back to Ukraine and see some of your future workshops and presentations that you give. 
um, help each other, empower each other, encourage each other, because that's how we're going to make our educational system stronger. That's how we're going to change it for the better. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.